Hello again. Here's how to make an electric Corex creeper. Um, it's quite a simple project to make and great fun. Um, my inspiration for this design comes from um, an idea that seems to have appeared in the world of uh, design technology in schools in the last few years where um, a motor is fixed to a small um, hairbrush or, or nail brush and the motor itself is fitted with um, an off-centre mass, uh, sometimes you, you could call it a cam, so that when it spins, the off-centre mass uh, causes the motor to shake and then uh, shakes whatever it's fixed to, causing it to vibrate, and you get this rather surprising, uh, appealing movement from the brush. Well, um, quite often um, I'm asked to go to schools and work with um, three classes of 30, so um, turning up with 90 of these is, is, is probably going to be a bit of a problem. So I've, I've come up with this design which uh, uses my favourite material, um, Corex. The component count is quite small. All I've got here is a, a piece of 3mm um, Corex. Uh, it must be 3mm and the uh, flutes, the holes inside the Corex must run across the piece. So it's uh, roughly 12 centimetres long, 5 centimetres wide, with the flutes running across. Um, for, for the legs, instead of the bristles of the brush, we're going to use pipe cleaners. Um, the more legs you put on your creeper, the, the better it seems to work. I, uh, each pipe cleaner makes two legs. Um, I, th I think the minimum that the creeper needs is uh, six legs, so you'll need uh, at least three pipe cleaners. These pipe cleaners are about 15 centimetres long. Um, what else do you need? You need uh, a motor. Now you can use the standard round DC motor uh, that's available from my supply service and elsewhere. Uh, but if you've got them, these um, flat sided motors are a little bit more convenient because it, it's easier to uh, fix them, uh, glue them or tape them to the piece of coax. But uh, the round motors can, can be used and they, they work absolutely fine. Um, if I was going to do this in schools, I would um, turn up with the motors with wires soldered on. Um, if you buy motors from me, I will solder the wires on um, free of charge. So, uh, what else do we need? We need a um, single AA battery holder. Uh, you could use the type with the uh, solder tags at the end. I find uh, this type with the wires pre-fitted uh, easier to use. AA battery and the off-centre mass. It's just a wheel that's had a second hole drilled in the edge and that is just simply pushed on like that. And that's it. It's a very simple project. Perhaps some eyes and a few uh, pieces of material for decorating as well. The whole thing can be made uh, just using sticky tape. First thing we're going to do is to fit the legs they're just pushed through the holes in the corex. As I said, it has to be 3mm. The 4mm, the, um, the legs will be too loose. Uh, I'll try and space the legs out evenly so that there's an equal length of leg on each side. It's not too critical. And again, the spacing between each leg as well. Try and get that reasonably even. There we go. So that's our body done with the uh, legs and as I said uh, if you had more legs that, that's, that seems to make it work even better. Um, I've got a glue gun handy so I'm just going to glue the motor on. Um, this type of motor the wires are on top so glue it on the other side where you've got a flat surface. As I said you could use double sided tape or uh, just normal sticky tape just wrap it round and glue it on level with the edge of the corex so that there's room for the cam to, uh, or the off-centre mass to turn round. Push it on via the second hole near the edge so that it can turn like that. Next we're going to um, glue the battery holder at the other end to uh, balance the bug. It doesn't really matter which way round the battery goes uh, but I like to put it this way round 
because um, I'm not going to bother to put a switch on this. I'm going to switch it, turn it off and on just by taking the battery out. And it's easier to have the uh, plus end of the battery at the edge because it just helps to get the um, battery out when you want to turn it off. Again, you could fix this with double sided tape. Uh, again, I'm going to use a glue gun. And that's glued at the other end, the same side as the motor. Doesn't really, I don't think it matters an awful lot uh, which way round the uh, bug is. Um, I like to hide the motor and the battery holder underneath. So I'm now going to bend the, the uh, pipe cleaners down. Like that. And then the other side. And now let's um, connect up the, the bug, let's pop the battery in, make sure you get it the right way around. And um, it doesn't really matter which way the motor goes, um, these wires are a bit long. I'm going to take one wire from the battery and connect it to one wire from the motor, cross over the bare ends and twist them together several times. And then I like to fold it in half as well. And then same the other side, twist them together, I can feel the motor's trying to go, so as soon as I pick it up, should, yes there we are, it's buzzing away, I'm just going to take the battery out to target these wires up, perhaps I should have cut them a bit shorter, but I'm going to see if I can tidy them up and stick them down with uh, sticky tape, making sure that the the two junctions don't actually touch each other. So let's stick that piece down there with some tape and I think I should be able to persuade this to sit down there. Out of harm's way. There we are. A piece of sticky tape. There we are. Try not to have any sticky tape showing. Make sure the wire doesn't to be with the legs. So um, that's it. It is a very simple project isn't it? Um, let's pop the battery in and let's see what happens. Oh yes, we've got some interesting movement there. And what I like about this project is that there's lots of things that you can vary. Let's just turn the battery, pull the battery out. Um, you can change the way it moves by bending these legs around, that way or that way, or outwards and inwards. Um, you can also experiment by cutting the legs a bit shorter, but when you cut the legs shorter, make sure that there's still room for the cam to actually turn around without hitting the um, floor. Um, I, would, I would recommend that you do cut these legs perhaps um, a little bit shorter. Um, what else could we do? We could uh, do some decorating, obviously perhaps some um, googly eyes once you've worked out which way it's going or tends to go Since that one it does seem to go in the direction of the can but that's not always the case so I'm going to glue oh, I'm going to glue the eyes on that end lots of potential for the pupils to come up with their own ideas for decoration Perhaps we could add uh, antennae as well. There we go, what fun. Um, here's some more that I've made. I've got a, a ladybird here with the wrong number of legs. There's one here. Uh, I've added more legs there. It seems to, seems to be that the more legs, the, the, the better these things work. Um, well, I, I hope you enjoy making these Corex Creepers, and if you just uh, hang on a minute, you will now see a sequence where all of these bugs are moving around. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's try and uh, wake up these Corex Creepers. Oh, off he goes. Going into the distance. Let's see what this one does. Oh, that's a much slower one. Oh, 
And there's another one. Oh, it's going over to investigate that wall. There's another one. Ladybird with the wrong wrong number of legs. Where are you going? Right, you're gonna go over there now. What are these others up to here? Seem to attract yourself. Okay, come and join the others. Let's see what these two are up to over here. Looks like they're trying to escape. Come, come and join your friends. 